The unexpected rendezvous, the scent of burnt circuitry and electrical tang lingered heavily in the air of Outpost Delta-7, a time-worn space station perched on the edge of human-governed territory. He wiped sweat from his brow, leaving a streak of grease across his forehead. Come on, you old bucket. Don't fail me now. Dexter Quinn, at just 28, was the youngest and arguably the most adept mechanic on Delta-7. Despite his unparalleled skills, his talent for fixing things hadn't exactly made him rich. Delta-7, much like its inhabitants, was barely keeping afloat in the vast economic sea of the galaxy. Suddenly, a tremor shook the station, nearly knocking Dexter off his feet. Warning sirens blared, their piercing wails echoing through the metal corridors. What the cosmic dust? Scrambling to his feet, Dexter shoved his tools into his belt and raced toward the source of the chaos. The station's docking bay was in disarray. Technicians and dock workers scattered like startled piranhas as a colossal ship, unlike anything Dexter had ever seen, limped into the hangar. Its sleek, organic lines were marred by burn marks and gaping wounds, yet the vessel exuded an aura of power and alien elegance. As the ship settled onto the docking clamps with a groan of protesting metal, Dexter found himself inexplicably drawn forward. His mechanic's mind was already cataloguing the damage, estimating repair times, and pondering the strange technology before him. The ship's airlock hissed open, releasing a cloud of sweet-smelling vapor. Dexter's jaw dropped as three figures emerged from the mist. They were unmistakably female, each standing at least nine feet tall, with powerfully built frames that spoke of both strength and agility. Their skin shimmered with iridescent hues, ranging from deep violet to vibrant teal, and their hair floated around their heads as if suspended in water. Are you the one in charge here? The lead alien, her skin a deep sapphire, surveyed the docking area with piercing silver eyes. When her gaze landed on Dexter, he felt a jolt of electricity run down his spine. Intelligence shimmered in those eyes, coupled with something else, desperation. I'm not in charge, but I might be able to help. Dexter squared his shoulders, stepping forward confidently. I am Captain Vexa of the Luminar Alliance. Our ship requires immediate repairs. We have limited time and resources. Can you assist us? Dexter's mind raced. The technology of the alien ship was light years beyond anything he'd worked on before. It was the challenge of a lifetime, yet the risk was immense. Who knew what kind of trouble these aliens might bring to Delta-7? But as he looked into Captain Vexa's eyes, he saw not just powerful alien warriors, but beings in desperate need. Their ship was their lifeline, just as Delta-7 was his. In that moment, the decision was clear. I'll do my best, but I'll need to know what I'm dealing with. Captain Vexa exchanged glances with her companions before nodding curtly. Very well, human. But be warned, our technology is not to be trifled with. One wrong move could spell disaster for your entire station. As Dexter followed the towering aliens into their ship, he couldn't shake the feeling that he was stepping into something far bigger than a simple repair job. The air hummed with energy, and strange lights pulsed along the corridors. It was beautiful, terrifying, and utterly alien. So, what brings a ship like yours to our humble outpost? Must be something pretty serious to risk a landing in your condition. The smallest of the aliens, though still taller than Dexter, stepped forward. Her skin was a pale emerald with patterns that shifted and swirled. We are being pursued by the Void Reavers. They seek to see our mission fail. The fate of entire worlds hangs in the balance. Human, your aid may prove more crucial than you can imagine. Dexter whistled low. No pressure, then. Well, ladies, let's see what we're dealing with. I may not know much about alien politics or interstellar warfare, but I do know machines. And every machine, no matter how advanced, follows certain principles. Reaching the engine room, Dexter's eyes widened in wonder. At the heart of the ship was a pulsating orb of energy surrounded by intricate patterns of light and metal. It was unlike anything he'd ever seen, yet he could sense its rhythm and purpose. Truly incredible. Rolling up his sleeves, Dexter turned to Captain Vexa with a grin. All right, Captain. Let's get to work. I may be just a simple human mechanic, 
but I've got a feeling we're about to make some history together. The alien women exchanged looks of surprise and grudging respect as Dexter began his assessment of the damaged systems. He couldn't help but feel a thrill of excitement. Whatever challenges lay ahead, he was ready to face them. After all, this was what humanity did best, rising to the occasion, solving the impossible, and maybe, just maybe, changing the course of the galaxy in the process. Little did Dexter know that his decision to help these mysterious aliens would not only test his skills as a mechanic, but also thrust him into an adventure beyond his wildest dreams. As he worked, the stars outside Delta Seven seemed to shine a little brighter, as if anticipating the remarkable events about to unfold. Three days had passed since Captain Vexa and her crew arrived. The engine room of their ship had become Dexter's second home. The pulsating energy core hummed a constant, otherworldly melody as he worked. Pass me the flux calibrator, would you? Dexter called out, his voice muffled as he leaned deep into an access panel. Mira, the green-skinned alien who had become his unofficial assistant, handed him a tool that looked more like a living crystal than any wrench he'd ever used. You're adapting quickly to our technology, Dexter? Dexter emerged from the panel, wiping sweat from his brow. Thanks. It's like nothing I've ever seen, but there's a logic to it. It's not just machinery, it's almost alive. He paused, realizing how strange that sounded. Is that crazy? Smiles, not at all. Our ships are indeed partially organic. They grow and adapt much like we do. It's why repairing them requires more than just mechanical skill. It requires understanding and intuition. Captain Vexa entered the engine room, her commanding presence filling the space. Report. Her silver eyes fixed on Dexter. We're making progress, Captain. The main propulsion system is back online, and I've managed to patch up most of the hull breaches. But there's something odd about the damage. It's not just from weapons fire. Some of these systems look like they've been infected. Captain Vex's expression darkened. You are more perceptive than we anticipated, human. The damage to our ship is indeed not entirely from battle. We are pursued by an enemy that wages war, not just with weapons, but with a technological plague. Dexter's mind reeled at the implications. A plague that affects machines? Is that even possible in our part of the galaxy? It is a grim reality. The Void Reavers have weaponized self-replicating nanites. They corrupt and consume any technology they touch, turning it against its users. The pieces fell into place in Dexter's mind. The strange, almost cancerous growths he'd found in some of the ship's systems, the way certain components seemed to fight against repair, it all made terrifying sense. That's why you risked coming to a human outpost? Dexter, your own ports might be compromised, but our technology is too primitive to be affected. Captain Vexa nodded, a hint of respect in her eyes. Correct. Your isolation, which you may have seen as a weakness, is in fact your greatest strength in this conflict. The Void Reavers overlook your species, deeming you too technologically inferior to be a threat. They do not realize that this very inferiority makes you immune to their greatest weapon. Dexter let out a low whistle. Well, I'll be. Never thought being behind the times would be an advantage. He paused, a thought occurring to him. But wait, if these nanites are so dangerous, am I at risk working on your ship? Places a reassuring hand on his shoulder. No, Dexter. We've contained the affected areas. Moreover, your biology is incompatible with the nanites. You are safer than any of us in this fight. As this information sank in, alarms suddenly blared throughout the ship. They found us sooner than expected. Dexter's heart raced. How long do we have? Hours at most. We need full power to our defensive systems and engines immediately. Dexter nodded, his mind already racing through possibilities. I have an idea, but it's risky. We might be able to use your ship's organic nature to our advantage. If we can stimulate rapid growth in the undamaged sections, we might be able to isolate and excise the infected parts entirely. That's brilliant but incredibly dangerous. The shock to the ship's systems could be catastrophic. Do it. We have no choice. Lyra assisted Dexter in any way she could as Captain Vexa prepared the crew for battle. Dexter turned to Mira, 
adrenaline coursing through his veins. All right, let's do this. Show me everything you know about your ship's biological systems. We're about to perform some extreme surgery. For the next several hours, Dexter and Mira worked in perfect synchronization. Dexter's human intuition and mechanical expertise blended seamlessly with Mira's deep understanding of her ship's organic nature. They coaxed healthy systems into accelerated growth, carefully excised corrupted sections, and routed power in ways that pushed the boundaries of both human and alien engineering. As they worked, Dexter found himself opening up to Mira, sharing stories of his life on Delta Seven, his dreams of exploring the stars, and the loneliness that had driven him to become the best mechanic in the sector. A week ago, my biggest worry was making rent. Now, I'm helping save the galaxy from space pirates with a tech virus. Funny how life works out. Laughs like chiming crystals. The universe has a way of putting us where we need to be, Dexter. Perhaps this is where you were always meant to end up. As the ship's systems slowly came back online, stronger and more resilient than before, Dexter felt a sense of accomplishment, unlike anything he'd ever known. He'd done more than just fix a machine. He'd helped heal a living vessel, and in the process, forged a connection with beings from across the stars. All hands, battle stations, Void Reaver airships approaching prepare for immediate engagement. Dexter and Mira exchanged a look of determination tinged with fear. The true test of their work was about to begin, and the fate of not just this ship, but potentially entire worlds, hung in the balance. Racing to their stations, Dexter couldn't help but feel a mix of terror and exhilaration. He was about to face an enemy beyond his wildest imagination, armed with nothing but his wits and a half-repaired alien ship. But as he looked at Mira and thought of the trust Captain Vexer had placed in him, he knew one thing for certain. Humanity was about to prove its worth on a galactic stage. The battle for survival was about to begin, and Dexter Quinn, the simple mechanic from Delta Seven, was right at the heart of it. The ship's corridors thrummed with nervous energy as Dexter raced alongside Mira toward the bridge. Crew members, each towering over Dexter, moved with practiced efficiency, a choreographed dance of pre-battle preparations. Bursting onto the bridge, Dexter's breath caught in his throat. Through the expansive viewscreen, he saw the vast emptiness of space torn asunder by the approach of the Void Reaver fleet. Their ships were monstrosities of twisted metal and pulsating sickly green energy, a stark contrast to the sleek, organic design of Captain Vex's vessel. Status report. Dexter stepped forward, surprising himself with his own boldness. The ship's primary systems are online, Captain. We've managed to isolate and remove about 60% of the nanite infection. It's not perfect, but it's the best we could do in the time we had. Captain Vexa nodded, a flicker of approval in her eyes. It will have to be enough. Mira, take your station. Dexter, stay on the bridge. Your understanding of our ship's current condition may prove vital. Mira took her position at a console that seemed to grow out of the floor itself. Dexter felt a mixture of pride and terror. He was about to witness an interstellar battle firsthand, and somehow, he had become an important part of it. The Void Reaver ships entered weapons range, and one of the crew announced in a tense voice. Captain, Void Reavers entering weapons range. Raise shields and prepare main cannons. Let's show these Void Reavers the strength of a unified front. The ship hummed to life, energy coursing through its veins like blood. Dexter could feel the vibrations through the deck plates, a testament to the power at their disposal. Suddenly, the viewscreen lit up with streaks of sickly green energy as the Void Reavers opened fire. The ship shuttered under the assault but held firm, shields holding at 85%. Reinforcements are working, Dexter. Dexter allowed himself a small smile of satisfaction, but it was short-lived. The battle had only just begun. For what felt like hours, the space around them became a deadly dance of energy beams and explosive ordnance. How are they still functional? Dexter muttered, watching as a Void Reaver ship regenerated a gaping hole in its hull. It's like they're adapting. The nanites allow their ships to evolve during battle, learning from each hit they take. Dexter's mind raced. 
If the Void Reavers could adapt, then so could they. Captain, I have an idea forming. What if we could use their own trick against them? Captain Vexa turned to him, intrigued despite the chaos of battle around them. Explain quickly. The nanites we removed from your ship are still on board, right? Contained? What if we could reprogram them, turn them into a weapon against the Void Reavers? It's possible, but incredibly dangerous. One wrong move and we could infect our own ship. Growls do it. A frantic race against time ensued as the battle raged around them. Dexter and Mira worked feverishly to reprogram the captured nanites. Dexter's unorthodox human approach to problem solving melded with Mira's deep understanding of the technology, creating something entirely new. Got it, holds up a glowing canister, a swarm of nanites programmed to target the Void Reaver's unique energy signatures. They'll disrupt their adaptive capabilities. Load it into the main cannon. Prepare to fire on my mark. As the weapon was prepared, the situation outside grew dire. Two of the five Void Reaver ships had been destroyed, but the remaining three had adapted to most of their attacks. Shields were failing, and whole sections were reported with breaches. Nanite payload ready to fire, Captain. Wait for it, fire! The ship launched the specially modified Nanite payload. For a moment, nothing seemed to happen. Then, like a wave of metallic sand, the Nanites swarmed over the lead Void Reaver ship. Its sickly green glow flickered and died, replaced by spreading patches of dead metal. It was working. The Void Reavers are faltering. Press the advantage. All weapons fire at will. What had been a desperate defense became a coordinated assault. Captain Vex's ship, battered but unbroken, unleashed a barrage of energy weapons. The Void Reavers, unable to adapt or regenerate, crumbled under the onslaught. As the last Void Reaver ship exploded in a brilliant flash of light and scatter, a cheer erupted on the bridge. Dexter found himself swept up in the celebration, exchanging triumphant looks with Mira and receiving a nod of respect from Captain Vexa. But their jubilation was short-lived as the adrenaline of battle faded and the true cost became apparent. The ship had taken heavy damage and reports of injuries among the crew began to pour in. We won the battle, but the war is far from over. The Void Reavers will send more ships once they realize this group has been defeated. Dexter looked out at the starfield now littered with the remnants of battle. So what do we do now? We repair, we plan, and we take the fight to them. The Void Reavers have plagued this sector for too long. It's time to end this once and for all. As the gravity of the situation settled over the bridge, Dexter realized that his adventure was far from over. He had stepped into a conflict that spanned galaxies, and now, somehow, he had become an integral part of it. The simple life he had known on Delta Seven seemed a distant memory. Determined, Dexter made a decision. Whatever came next, whatever battles lay ahead, he was in this to the end. Humanity had proven its worth today, and he was determined to see this through, no matter the cost. The ship limped away from the battlefield, setting course for repairs and reinforcements. Dexter Quinn, the once simple mechanic from a backwater space station, prepared himself for the next chapter in this unexpected saga. The stars themselves seemed to watch, waiting to see what this unlikely alliance of humans and aliens would do next. Days following the battle were a blur of frantic activity. Dexter found himself working alongside the alien crew, repairing damage, reinforcing weakened systems, and implementing upgrades based on what they'd learned from the Void Reaver's encounter. His hands were constantly stained with a mixture of grease and the bioluminescent fluid that served as the ship's lifeblood. You know, Mira, I never thought I'd say this, but I'm starting to understand your ship better than any human tech I've ever worked on. Smiles. Perhaps because you're not just fixing it, Dexter. You're connecting with it, almost as if you were part of the crew. Dexter realized that somewhere along the way, this alien vessel had become more than just a job or an adventure. It had become a home. Their moment of reflection was interrupted by Captain Vexa's voice over the intercom. All senior staff and Dexter Quinn report to the strategy room immediately. As they entered the strategy room, Dexter was struck by the gravity in Captain Vexa's expression. 
holographic displays flickered to life, showing star charts and fleet movements. We've received word from our allies. The Void Reavers are amassing for a major offensive. They plan to strike at the heart of the Luminar Alliance. A murmur of concern rippled through the assembled crew. But that's not all. Our victory has not gone unnoticed. Other species, long hesitant to stand against the Void Reavers, are rallying to our cause. We have a chance to end this war once and for all. The holographic display shifted, showing a massive space station orbiting a dying star, the Void Reavers' main base of operations, hidden in the Coronis Nebula. Our mission is to lead an assault on this station and destroy their nanite production facilities. Dexter's mind reeled at the scale of what they were proposing. Captain, even with allies, we'd be outnumbered. How can we possibly succeed? Captain Vex's gaze fell on Dexter, a hint of a smile on her lips. That's where you come in, Dexter. Your unconventional thinking and understanding of both our technology and the Void Reaver's weaknesses make you uniquely qualified to help plan this assault. For the next several hours, Dexter found himself in the middle of a war council, unlike anything he could have imagined. He contributed ideas on how to counteract the Void Reaver's adaptive technology, suggested modifications to their allied ships to make them more resistant to nanite infection, and even proposed a daring plan to use the Dying Star's radiation as a weapon against the Void Reaver's base. The day of the assault arrived all too quickly. Dexter stood on the bridge, watching as ships from a dozen different species assembled around them, a united front against a common enemy. It was a sight that would have been impossible just weeks ago. All ships, report ready. Voice tense with anticipation. Let us bring an end to the Void Reaver threat. The battle that followed was unlike anything Dexter had ever experienced. The void of space lit up with weapons fire, shields flared and failed, and ships on both sides were torn apart in fantastic explosions. Dexter found himself racing from system to system, implementing last-minute fixes and adjustments to keep their ship in the fight. As they neared the Void Reaver's base, a massive energy surge erupted from the dying star. The Void Reavers had weaponized the star itself, using it to launch devastating attacks against the Allied fleet. We need to get closer to deploy the nanite disruptors. Exclaims. If we can stimulate rapid growth and regeneration, we might be able to withstand the star's energy long enough to get close. Eyes widen in understanding. It's risky, but it might work. We'll be pushing the ship beyond its limits. Do it. Trust is evident in her voice. What followed was a harrowing journey into the heart of the maelstrom. Dexter and Mira worked in perfect sync, coaxing impossible performance from the ship's living systems. The hull grew and regenerated almost as quickly as the star's energy burned it away, allowing them to push closer and closer to their target. Deploy the disruptors. A swarm of reprogrammed nanites, the culmination of Dexter's work with the alien technology, surged toward the Void Reaver's base. The effect was immediate and devastating. The base's defenses faltered, and its adaptive capabilities were disrupted at the most fundamental level. All ships concentrate fire on the primary reactor. The combined firepower of a dozen species rained down on the Void Reaver's base. For a moment, it seemed to hold. Then, with a silent flash that outshone the dying star itself, the base erupted in a cataclysmic explosion. As the light faded and the realization of victory settled in, cheers erupted across the Allied fleet. Dexter found himself swept up in a crushing embrace by Mira, her joy palpable, but their celebration was cut short as alarms blared across the bridge. Captain the Star, the Void Reaver's weapon, is destabilizing its core. It's going supernova. Voice cutting through the panic, all ships emergency retreat, clear the blast radius immediately. As they raced away from the exploding star, Dexter worked feverishly to keep their battered ship together for just a little longer. The viewscreen behind him filled with the awesome, terrifying spectacle of a star's death. Just as it seemed they wouldn't make it, their ship lurched into faster-than-light travel. The supernova's shockwave nipped at their heels as they emerged into safe space. The bridge fell silent. The weight of what they had accomplished and witnessed 
settling over everyone. Dexter looked around at the alien crew he now considered friends and comrades. They had faced impossible odds and emerged victorious. The Void Reavers were defeated, their threat to the galaxy ended. As the adrenaline of battle faded, Dexter realized that his adventure was coming to an end. He had played a crucial role in saving not just one civilization, but many. The simple life he had known on Delta Seven seemed a lifetime ago. Dexter Quinn, you have proven yourself a true asset, not just to this ship, but to the entire Luminar Alliance. I believe it's time we discuss your future. Dexter looked at Mira, seeing the hope in her eyes, then back at Vexa. He realized that the greatest adventure of his life was not ending, it was just beginning, with a smile that held both excitement and a touch of nervousness. I'm listening, Captain. What do you have in mind? As the ship set course for the heart of the Luminar Alliance, Dexter Quinn, once a simple mechanic, now a hero of the galaxy, prepared himself for the next chapter in his extraordinary journey among the stars. A new horizon awaited. The gleaming spires of New Avalon, the capital world of the Luminar Alliance, stretched toward the sky, a testament to the resilience and ingenuity of countless species working together. Dexter stood on the observation deck of Captain Vex's ship, now officially christened the Star Haven, marveling at the sight before him. It's beautiful, isn't it? Dexter nodded, still processing the whirlwind of events that had led him here. Sometimes I still think I'm going to wake up back on Delta Seven, and all of this will have been a dream. Her hand finds his, sending a familiar warmth through him. I can assure you, Dexter Quinn, this is very real. Your contributions to our victory are not forgotten. Captain Vex's voice came over the intercom. Dexter Mira, report to the main hall. The Council is ready to see us. The next few hours passed in a blur of ceremony and accolades. Dexter found himself standing before the High Council of the Luminar Alliance, beings of various species, all regarding him with a mixture of curiosity and respect. He listened in awe as Captain Vexa recounted their battles against the Void Reavers, emphasizing Dexter's crucial role in their victory. We stand before you not just to report our victory, but to present a proposal. Dexter Quinn has proven that humanity, despite its relative technological inferiority, possesses qualities that make them invaluable allies. We propose opening formal diplomatic relations with Earth, with Dexter serving as our first ambassador. A murmur rippled through the assembled council members. Dexter's heart raced. This was beyond anything he had imagined. Dexter Quinn of Earth. You have done a great service to the Luminar Alliance, and indeed to the entire galaxy. But we must ask, are you prepared for such a responsibility? To be the bridge between your world and ours? Dexter took a deep breath, looking at Captain Vexa and Mira, who gave him encouraging nods. Counselors, a month ago, I was just a mechanic struggling to make ends meet on a forgotten outpost. I never imagined I'd be standing here, having played a part in saving the galaxy. Through this journey, I've learned that sometimes the most unlikely individuals can make the greatest difference. He paused, gathering his thoughts. Humanity has much to learn, it's true, but we also have much to offer. Our adaptability, our creativity, our determination. These are qualities that allowed me to work alongside Captain Vexa and her crew to find solutions where none seemed possible. I believe that by fostering understanding and cooperation between our peoples, we can create a stronger, more unified galaxy. The council chamber fell silent as they considered his words. Finally, the head counselor spoke again. Very well, Dexter Quinn of Earth. We accept Captain Vex's proposal. You shall be our ambassador to humanity, tasked with preparing your people for the introduction to the wider galactic community. As the pronouncement was made official, Dexter felt a weight settle on his shoulders, the weight of responsibility and the trust placed in him. But along with it came a sense of excitement and purpose he had never known before. The ceremony concluded, and Dexter found himself back on the Star Haven, preparing for their journey to Earth. As he packed the few belongings he had accumulated during his adventure, there was a knock at his door. Calls out, enter. Mira stepped in, her eyes shimmering with an emotion Dexter couldn't quite place. 
ready to change the course of human history. Ambassador Quinn? Dexter chuckled, shaking his head in disbelief. I'm not sure anyone's ever ready for something like that, but I'll do my best. He paused, looking at Mira intently. I couldn't have done any of this without you. You and the entire crew have become like family to me. Moves closer, taking his hands in hers. Dexter, we've been through so much together. I want you to know that whatever comes next, whatever challenges we face in bringing our peoples together, you won't face them alone. Their eyes met, and in that moment, Dexter realized that his journey had brought him more than just adventure and purpose. It had brought him love, transcending the boundaries of species and stars. As the Starhaven prepared to depart for Earth, Dexter stood on the bridge alongside Captain Vexer and Mira. The vastness of space stretched out before them, filled with endless possibilities. Course laid in for the Sol system. Captain Vexer nodded, then turned to Dexter. Well, Ambassador, are you ready to make history? Dexter took a deep breath, feeling the weight of the moment. He thought of the life he'd left behind on Delta Seven, of the incredible journey that had brought him here, and of the challenges and wonders that lay ahead. Ready as I'll ever be. Captain, let's show humanity the stars. As the Starhaven leaped into faster-than-light travel, Dexter Quinn, mechanic-turned-galactic-hero-turned-ambassador, felt a sense of anticipation unlike anything he'd ever known. The simple repair job that had started it all seemed a lifetime ago. Now, he stood at the threshold of a new era for humanity, ready to guide his species into a larger, more wondrous universe. The stars streaked by outside, each one a promise of new adventures, new challenges, and new horizons. With his newfound family of aliens at his side, Dexter was ready to face them all. As the ship hurtled towards Earth, Dexter realized that his greatest adventure wasn't ending, it was just beginning. The universe, in all its vast and mysterious glory, awaited, and Dexter Quinn, once a simple mechanic from Delta Seven, was ready to embrace it with open arms. Thank you for watching. Like, share, and subscribe for more original content. New chapters and standalone stories uploaded weekly.